So um, I'm with Miss Robbie, who's head of wellbeing, and who also is an English teacher. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to be talking to you about wellbeing and the wellbeing aspect of school and the curriculums. So to start off, great. just give us an overview of what wellbeing is and how we use it in school. Okay, great. Um, so we try and put wellbeing in the heart of everything we do here at Bremer, especially. My role is about student wellbeing particularly, so we do that in several ways, um, following the head, heart and hand vision really, to look after our pupils' emotional, mental and physical health. So physical health is also addressed through PE, um, but we also have other like physical activities we do, like yoga club and things like that. Um, but mostly our wellbeing is making sure that our students are emotionally ready for school, they're comfortable, they know how to be resilient and deal with problems, um, and really try and foster some independence around we care for them, but also they learn how to care for themselves as well, like moving on out of Frederick Bremer as well. So we do this through our wellbeing curriculum, which is uh, a taught subject in form time, so delivered by the pastoral staff. Um, we also have, as I said, some before school clubs that we're going to be getting up and running. And we have two student leadership strands of form reps. And we have the Youth Health Champions, the YACs, of which you are one. So I'll ask you about that shortly, I think. Yeah. So with the overall teaching about wellbeing mm -hmm. and the wellbeing curriculums for different year groups, um, how do you keep consistent in balancing the head, heart and hand scheme and the different aspects of wellbeing, for example economics? Mm -hmm. Okay, so we have five strands, so five broad topics of the wellbeing curriculum, and the head, heart, and hand uh, sort of reflection criteria are woven into those almost as learning objectives. So, like today, we're focusing on being able to do these things. So, we have um, you mentioned economics, so it's money matters, so it's financial literacy, because we also want to equip students with skills like life skills too, because that's going to affect their wellness and well being outside of school. Um, the rest of it is really to do with health and, and safety as well. So we have CyberSense, which is online safety. As I said, money matters. We have healthy bodies and healthy minds, um, which is kind of self-explanatory. We have SEAL, which is social and emotional aspects of learning. Um, and we also have enterprise, which are career skills. So you work on lots of different soft skills like public speaking, leadership, teamwork, problem solving, um, all that sort of thing. And um, each year group will work their way through each of these every year, but the module that they do is catered to their age group and their developmental phase at that point in their school career as well. So what year seven get in Healthy Bodies, Healthy Minds, year 11 will have something completely different because obviously they're very different ages. So, yeah. Should we go into more detail about the leadership aspects of wellbeing and yeah. what that means for different students? Yeah, I think that'd be great. So, do you want to talk us through your experience as a health champion? Yeah, so I have spent two years as a youth health champion. Um, I've got a qualification at the end of it. And within that, we are able to put the theory into practice and also develop our skills more around well-being and how we interact with others and how we interact with ourselves. And so within the module of the YHCs, we um, study things like different scenarios of how we can help other people with their well-being and how also we are equipped and other people around us are equipped, for example, teachers and um, safeguarding and how we communicate both between the teachers and the students, as well as kind of making well-being the top priority, but also referring to other aspects and still keeping our leadership as a whole able to reflect the students and what they want, what they think is important. Mm -hmm. So you'd say that your role is kind of a student mentor in a way, mm -hmm. and the, the topics you cover are fed to you by the students? Yeah. Okay. So we have different campaigns, such as last year we did a yellow ribbon campaign for raising awareness for those with special educational needs and how their experience of school could be bettered by other people around them being aware of what they have to go through. Um, we've also come up with a charter um, 
and that sort of reflects the teacher-student relationship but also the fact that we have to keep in mind everybody's well-being and that we need to prioritise that over maybe getting the best grade or doing the best piece of work if your well-being isn't